It's a great pleasure to see so many colleagues and friends uh, here in Tokyo with me this morning, and also greetings to all of those following this sixth summit for space sustainability online. It's a great pleasure to be here. We're super excited to be holding our first summit for space sustainability here in Tokyo. First time in the Asia Pacific region. So I welcome all of you present here in person and those joining us online. We're very honored to have partnered with the cabinet office of the government of Japan to organize this event. And we are excited to have opening remarks on behalf of the government of Japan presented by the Minister of State for Space Policy, Her Excellency Minister Takaichi. Unfortunately, the minister was unable to join us this morning, but she has very kindly recorded remarks that we will play for you now. Hello and welcome to all distinguished keynote speakers, panelists and participants. First, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for your participation in the sixth summit for space sustainability, co-hosted by Cabinet Office of Japan and the Secure World Foundation. The purpose of this summit is to foster and share an international common understanding among the global experts and stakeholders from security, industry, and academia involved in the use of outer space through global discussion from a wide range of perspectives, such as governmental, industrial, and academic, we can address both the challenges in ensuring the sustainable use of outer space and measures that should be taken to face those challenges. Japan actually participates in international discussions such as the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, and we are working to realize a free and open international order based on the rule of law in outer space. In May last year, as president of the G7 Summit, I hosted the G7 Sendai Science and Technology Ministers meeting and discussed the need to implement the international guidelines for space debris adopted by UN COPUS, as well as the need for mitigation and remediation of debris. The G7 Science and Technology Ministers communique includes strong encouragement for technical development effort to the joint statement as well as a commitment not to conduct destructive direct ascent anti-satellite missile testing and an encouragement for other countries to follow suit. Similar content is in the G7 Hiroshima readers communique in March this year, the government of Japan updated the May 2 long-term policy for rulemaking on the use of Earth orbit. This is an action plan to promote Japan's effort to enhance collision avoidance, space situational awareness, debris mitigation and remediation, on orbit services, and so on. I believe our experts will elaborate on issues addressed in the action plan, such as Japan's effort for rulemaking on the sustainable use of outer space, development of debris remediation technology, and establishment of organizational system for SSA implementation. I am looking forward to a lively discussion in this summit with many prominent readers and experts of space fields from various nations. I hope that we will dis deepen discussions on the sustainable use of outer space trend in the space industry and space technology development and way to ensure sustainable exploration. Thank you very much. I thank Minister Takaichi for her very inspiring remarks that clearly demonstrate the strong commitment of the government of Japan to promoting the open, free access to outer space and the sustainable use of outer space based on the rule of law, a commitment that you can see expressed 
in the various concrete initiatives described by the minister in her remarks and also the very fact of hosting the summit as well. So thank you very much to the government of Japan. In organizing this conference, we've had the pleasure of working closely with the Space Policy Secretariat in the Cabinet Office of the Government of Japan. And through the support of the Cabinet Office, this excellent venue was arranged, as well as numerous other logistical supports for which we are very, very grateful. It therefore gives me great pleasure to invite to the stage Director General Kazeki of the National Space Policy Secretariat in the Cabinet Office to deliver his opening remarks. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jun Kazeki, uh, Director General of National Space Policy Secretariat, uh, Cabinet Office of Japan. As Minister Takaichi addressed, an increased number of space debris is an imminent issue. The government of Japan has been committed to R&D for mitigation and remediation of space debris. One recent progress is a commercial debris removal demonstration project called CLD2. In May this year, the CLD2 Phase 1 demonstration satellite Atlas J became the first private sector satellite in the world to successfully approach 50 meters from orbital debris and took images. I suppose Mr. Yamamoto of JAXA and Mr. Okada of Astroscale will talk about the mission during this summit. Now, the theme of this summit is space sustainability. And for space sustainability, according to the long-term sustainability guidelines, in addition to the research and the development towards sustainable exploration, Three aspects are essential. First, policy and regulatory framework for space activities. Second, safety of space operations. And the third, international cooperation, including capacity building and awareness raising. Let me talk one by one. First, I would like to uh, share some of our continuing effort regarding the policy and regulatory framework. As Minister Takaichi uh, introduced, in March 2024, Japan's Interagency Task Force updated mid to long-term policy for rulemaking on the use of Earth orbit. The government of Japan launched this interagency task force on space traffic management in 2019 in view of the increasing risk of collision among space objects and rapidly progressing international discussion toward rulemaking regarding space traffic management. The task force chaired by Minister of State for Space Policy consists of relevant ministries and agencies. The policy document, which is on the website of the cabinet office, identifies the areas and the elements to be addressed. And it provides a direction for the rules for the use of orbit based on the domestic and international situation at the time of publication and division. Japan intends to accumulate Japan's practical efforts in space tariff traffic management in line with the mid to long-term policy on efforts for rulemaking on the use of Earth orbit, and to actively communicate Japan's practical effort in space truck management rulemaking to the international community through various opportunities, such as today's summit or space sustainability. Japan mitigates generation of debris by regulation. We require spacecraft control licenses to prevent dispersion of the components and parts, implement measures to avoid collision with other spacecraft when their spacecraft have maneuverability, and endeavor to remove the spacecraft from the low Earth orbit at the right timing 
after the end of the mission. Another example of the regulatory aspect is the Space Resources Act of Japan, which was enacted in 2021 to ensure that Japan's space resource activities comply with the Outer Space Treaty and are subject to appropriate authorization and uh, continuing supervision by the government of Japan. In addition, Japan ensures transparency by publicizing the approval project plan on the Cabinet Office website. The aim of this is to conduct the space resource activities in an internationally coordinated manner and to contribute to the prevention of conflict related to the activities. On November 4th, 2022, Japan granted the first license for space resource activities to a Japanese space startup, iSpace, under the Space Resources Act. The idea behind this regulation is that both on-orbit services and space resource activities should be conducted in a peaceful, safe, and sustainable manner consistent with the fundamental values of international order in outer space based on the rule of law. It is important to reach a common understanding among countries on necessary measures to prevent unregulated space resource development by some entities and conflict among them. Japan has been participating in discussions among the Altmesako's signatories on practical effort to share information on each country's lunar exploration mission to prevent collision. We believe that these efforts will be helpful for all countries. Japan believes that in order to promote safety, transparency, sustainability, science and industrial innovation, it is important for all of us to discuss practical international coordination measures to prevent harmful interferences and conflict. Japan would like to continue to actively contribute to the discussion in the UN Corpus Legal Subcommittee and Space Resources Working Groups. Now, uh, let me turn to the second point, safety issues. Let me present Japan's guidelines as examples of our efforts. In order to ensure safe, secure, and transparent operations on all orbit sites, Japan established national guidelines in 2021 that describe technical safety requirements. The guidelines requires entities conducting on-orbit servicing to obtain consent from the entity having the authority to the client object and to ensure transparency throughout the mission. Transparency is crucial in ensuring that the on-orbit servicing does not cause collisions with a client space object or third-party object and that the third-party spacecraft does not upload the service area without knowing the plan. In addition, Japan publishes an in-advance announcement on the orbit servicing project on the website of the Cabinet Office to ensure transparency. The first case of the in-advance announcement was the address J of Astro Scale Holdings. We hope that countries considering licensing on orbit servicing will establish standards and guidelines similar to Japan, including those related to transparency, so that uh, we can create a business environment in which these services can operate successfully. Another important element for safety is space situational awareness, SSA. SSA remains a priority for Japan. Ministry of Defense of Japan has developed an SSA system, which became fully operational in March 2023. We also began uh, providing SSA information, such as orbital information of space objects, the private satellite operators. The, this SSA system will help us make space more visible and avoid orbital collision. 
Let me go to the third point and the last point, that is the international cooperation. Obviously, those uh, practices are the most effective when they are internationally coordinated. Thus, in March 2024, Japan hosted the ninth International Symposium on ensuring the safe and sustainable use of outer space. Focusing on the rulemaking and the collaborations for ensuring the stable use of orbit. During the symposium, panelists and participants discuss the challenges and opportunities to realize globally coordinated effort to this end. And today and tomorrow, we co-host the sixth summit for space sustainability. So we are so much excited for this. Today, with these distinguished speakers and the participants, I am sure that uh, we will deepen discussion on how to ensure sustainability of space and further promote international cooperation and industry, academia, government collaboration in this field. I recognize the Secure World Foundation has held the summit every year since 2019 and fully appreciate its long-standing contributions. The government of Japan is honored to have an opportunity to co-host the, the first summit in Asia. Let me conclude my remark by wishing every success of this event. So now I would like to hand over to Dr. Peter Martinez, Executive Director of the Secure World Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Director General Kazeki. It's been a great pleasure to work with the Cabinet Office and we look forward to the discussions over the next two days. Before we launch into the summit program, allow me to provide some context for this sixth summit for space sustainability and some of the outcomes that I hope we will achieve from it. Space sustainability, as you all know, is a multifaceted challenge and the agenda of the summit reflects this. With more nations and non-state actors entering the space arena every year, we will begin by examining the connection between access to space and space sustainability. We will look at emerging issues and technological trends, with an emphasis this year on the topic of space debris remediation. There's broad consensus among the debris experts that remediation of orbital debris is something that needs to happen, something that will have to be done. But we have to figure out how to progress from discussing debris remediation to actually beginning to implement debris remediation. Another focus this year is on responsible behaviors in space. As more countries become active in space exploration, there will be more opportunities for partnerships. How do we harness these new partnership opportunities to promote space exploration in a sustainable way? We will also consider the role of finance and responsible investment in space sustainability. With the rising awareness of space sustainability challenges, we're also witnessing a proliferation of discussions on this topic in different fora and the emergence of new proposed norms, standards, and best practices for responsible operations in space. During this summit, we will discuss how best to harness these various developments for the collective good of space sustainability in a synergistic manner. So I would like to acknowledge that an event like this is not possible without the generous support of our partners and sponsors. And we would like to begin by thanking the Cabinet Office of the Government of Japan and um, uh, our Japanese colleagues for the tremendous support we've received, including this fantastic venue. Also, our global government partners, the UK Space Agency, the Luxembourg Space Agency, and the US Department of Commerce, Office of Space Commerce, and NOAA. Thank you very much. We would also like to thank our industry platinum partners, Amazon Project Kuiper and Astroscale, and our industry gold partners, JSAT and Viasat. Thank you also to all of our other industry, academic, and media partners for your contributions to the summit. We're mindful that when companies make decisions about sponsoring a conference, it's very often tied to business considerations, especially for small startups where uh, the, the choice on how to spend their limited marketing budgets uh, is uh, a very tough one sometimes. So thank you for demonstrating your commitment 
to space sustainability in this very tangible manner. Space sustainability is also a multi-generational challenge, and I'm pleased to note that a significant fraction of our participants here today are young space professionals, and I'd like to congratulate those young professionals that have won scholarships to attend this summit. The winners will be recognized later on in the summit agenda. Tomorrow morning, we will have a young professionals mentoring breakfast, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank in advance all of my colleagues who have volunteer to share their experience with the next generation of space leaders. I also want to acknowledge our young professional partners, Bryce Tech and Hio, for their support of the young professional activities at the summit. Turning now to outcomes, you will notice that we call this the summit for space sustainability, not the summit on space sustainability. And we do this because we intend that the discussions at the summit will help us to build a common understanding of the challenges of space sustainability and to identify pragmatic next steps forward. So what would I like to see coming out of this summit? Firstly, a greater understanding of Asia-Pacific regional perspectives on space sustainability, space situational awareness, space environment management, and space security. Secondly, I would like to see if we can make progress on identifying practical next steps to make debris remediation a reality. I'm looking forward to the outcomes of the roundtable discussion on this issue. And thirdly, I would like to see if we can make progress in identifying synergies among the various initiatives on space sustainability. I would like to conclude my opening remarks by noting that this year marks the 20th anniversary of Secure World Foundation. For 20 years, we've been raising the salience of space sustainability challenges and advocating for cooperative governance solutions to those challenges. Quite a number of people present in this room here today have been part of this journey with us, and I can think of no better way to mark the start of our commemorative year on this sixth summit of space sustainability. I would like to take this opportunity to thank those of you present here today and following online who have been part of our journey in one way or another. Over the coming months, we're looking forward to a series of events where we will reflect on the progress made and the challenges ahead. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to our deliberations over the next two days. Thank you.